And when I had that opportunity, that was when I felt what it meant for dreams to come true, for you to have your hopes and dreams and work towards it and make it happen. Duku Fore is an internationally renowned inspirational speaker, entrepreneur, and a self-published author of the book called The Poor Kid with Rich Dreams. There it is. He very kindly gifted it to the university just before we came onto the stage. And he's even written a dedication in the book for us. It says, to CQU, to your hopes and dreams. And I think that's a dedication to all of our graduates as well. Born in a refugee camp in Uganda, Doku immigrated to Australia when he was 10 years old and is now regularly invited to schools, events and conferences to share his story. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Duku Fore to deliver the occasional address. Thank you very much, Dr. Minchinton. And more than anything, um, Chancellor, dignitaries, our public, and most importantly, our graduates today, I want to say I am humbled by the privilege that was bestowed upon me to be your guest speaker for today. And more than anything, and I feel like the graduating students would enjoy this more than anyone, but my name, Doko, in different places, is said in different ways. So some people call me Count Duku, and other people may call me Duke, or some people, um, even in some African countries, they say my name Duku with a click, like Duku. Can I get everyone to try it? <laughs> you have to be very careful, because if you click more than three times, you'll be swearing at someone. <laughs> I was born in a refugee camp in Uganda. And when we were back home over there, one thing my grandma would tell my siblings and I in our mother tongue was, Doko, tetasa nyolu nyetu pite nyamvo titito. Asaniko kweri, mokaz oza kwe alora. Translated, that means, Doko, always stay with your siblings. Why? Because two sticks are harder to break than one. And I believe my grandma would tell my siblings and I that two sticks were harder to break than one because she understood that life was not just, a, not just about her. And I believe when you have a dream or a goal or an idea, or you are thinking of pursuing a higher education, like our graduates today, you have to understand that it's not just about you. And for some of our graduates today, it may be that they are the first people in their family to go to uni and not just go, but to actually graduate. And to some, it may be they may want to inspire their younger children to follow their dreams and go and do what makes them happy. And more than anything, I believe not only are these graduating students an inspiration to us, but they understand what it takes to work hard, and especially during a pandemic, and those late nights and at the same time to just continue chasing their dreams and understanding what it means for folks to open doors and actually making it this far, and now sitting in front of us and being being and, and at the same time looking marvelously, marvelously. Oh, sometimes I get excited so I start stuttering. <laughs> but they're looking amazing. And more than anything, I believe even Ralph Waldo Emerson said, it was one of the most beautiful compensation that you cannot try to help another individual without helping yourself. And by them helping themselves and at the same time wanting to help their family and the people around them, they're helping our community. And when it comes to my family, I believe um, what Abraham Lincoln said when he said, all that I am and all that I hope to be, I owe it to my parents. Because you see, when we first came to Australia, my family, we couldn't speak English. And my dad used to be a teacher back home where we came from. But when we came to Australia, his degree was not recognized. And as a result, at the age of 50, my dad understood that two sticks were harder to bring than one, and he wanted to inspire my, fam my family, and he wanted to inspire his children and his community that you, that you can follow your dream, it doesn't matter your age. And as a result, at the age of 50, my dad decided to enroll back into university. 
and studied a Bachelor of Human Services. And one thing he knew was that even though studying was challenging, my dad understood that since he was able to survive a war, he was able to survive the warfare on the paper. And as a result, he ended up he ended up studying all night and at the same time my siblings and I were able to see the dedication that he had to follow his dream. And at the age of 53, he managed to graduate with a Bachelor of Human Services. And as a result, that inspired me and my siblings and our community to follow our dreams, our hopes and dreams. And for me on a personal level, I was born with a speech impediment. And you can understand that English isn't my first language. But when I had a dream of wanting to inspire people, I said, you know what? I'm going to go out there, follow my dream, and inspire so many, so many lives. But one thing my little brother and I understood was that we didn't have all the equipment for us to follow our dreams. But we knew that it wasn't just about us, but it was bigger than us. And as a result, my little brother and I made our first motivational video in our bathroom. And the reason why we made it in the bathroom was because we didn't have the professional lighting. And if you can't tell, this light over here is on fleek, so it's hitting me good. <laughs> and, and, and as a result, um, we made the video in our bathroom because it had um, the heater light. And so we turned on the heater light, we made the video over there. It, it was a two minute video, but it took us more than two hours. But since we understood that it wasn't just about us, we continued, we had um, a sense of stick to itiveness to continue and going harder and following our dream. And as a result, before I knew it, I started getting invited to speak at different places and different conferences and different international countries. And what really humbled me was when I, was when I ended up getting invited to represent Australia at the United Nations headquarters in New York. And when I had that opportunity, that was when I felt what it meant for dreams to come true, for you to have your hopes and dreams and work towards it and make it happen. And as a result, I feel like our graduates today embody what it really means to follow your hopes and dreams and to go towards what you really want to do. And as a result, before I leave everyone and before you come and collect your wonderful achievements, um, can everyone repeat after me, including the public as well. Hard work pays off. Come on, we need better energy than that. <laughs> Let's try that again, okay? Hard work pays off. Dreams do come true. Tough times don't last, but tough people do. And when you're going towards your hopes and dream, you have to understand that two sticks are harder to bring than one. And more than anything, just know that you don't have to be great to get started, but you have to get started to be great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dooku. It's the first time anyone has described the lights at graduation as being on fleek. I appreciate that. On behalf of myself and my fellow graduates, I'd like to present our guest speaker, Mr. Dooku Foray, with this special gift as a token of our appreciation.